hey guys welcome back and in today's video we're going to be doing somewhat of like a car mukbang vlog husband tag mashup sort of thing um i'll probably end up vlogging the rest of the day too but as you can see back there he's trying to fit our french doors that we ordered in the bed of the truck and so we'll see if he pulls it off i think he can we'll, we'll see but i'm starting the vlog kind of late it's 2 p.m but we had to pick this up run at home hang out and then isaac has stayed with isaiah's mom over the weekend to give me kind of a break um, and let me rest since I'm pregnant and having a toddler is a lot but we have to go pick him up which is an hour south of here and then head home and get ready for the week but yeah that's what's going on today so he'll be back and I have lots of fun questions to ask him what's your next question oh okay let's ask it before they get over here so we met how we how we met okay at the restaurant we both went we at the at. restaurant she was waiting tables and i'll tell you what she was fine i looked at her head to toe and i said my 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 and what's your okay, name that kind of goes with question number two what was your first impression mm -hmm. i thought you were a player i was not a player i was playing the um college student two one full-time job one part-time job game i was a busy boy uh, although I did spend the occasional weekend out in the clubs, but that was just to dance. I was uh, a college kid working. Anytime uh, we was at the, at the club uh, and a girl approached me or something, I always got too nervous and just didn't really know how to respond. So, Which is fine because, I mean, I came to dance. Now, if you want to dance, it's a lot easier because we don't have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You just gotta wiggle that rump. How and where was our first date? I disagree with you on this. I already know I do. Okay, because you know that you invited me to B dubs. But I also had my friend with me. Then it was like after work. That I guess, wasn't a date. I guess that was some kind of plutonic deal, you know, but I, to me, it was like, because I had already had the hots for her. Forgive me, but she said, uh,. You know, you want to go to B-dubs after this? And to me, I was like, choo-ching. And so we were ordering our drinks. And I was like, I'll take, you know, whatever bottle of, what was it? A Dallas Blonde? Yeah, a Plains Brew. Plains Brew. Brewed here in the heart of Lubbock, Texas. And I said, and, and whatever the lady wants. And hell, throw her her friend's order on it, too. Why yeah. Heck. Bleep it out. Oh, she orders a Sprite. And I get red flags. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, what'd you order that for? Well, I can't buy it. Well, how old are you? She said, well, how old are you? I said, how old do you think I am? She probably threw out like 40 or something. I said 30. And I thought she was well over 21, but. 18 and fresh. <sighs> Still worked out. <laughs> okay. Where was our first kiss and how was it? Do you remember? At the house. No, it was apartment. your old apartment. Our old apartment. Well, of course, not at the house now, but it was at our old apartment. She always came over after work. It was work. Thanksgiving Day. And you had cooked me steak and stuff after work. So I work. wanted to take her to my kind of date, which was at the house. I'd cook her some steaks, cook her some steaks, and uh, buy a bottle of wine, which is funny because we had gone to Walmart and I wanted her to be real romantic. We had just got, we were working. Thanksgiving Day, it was insane because we were one of those restaurants that was open and it was very stressful and uh, I just wanted to come home so I went to Walmart, we bought a glass of wine a bottle of wine and I was on my way to the car and, and it. it just <laughs> slipped out of my hands and exploded and... but anyway, yeah that, that we kissed I think that was the night that my son was conceived Don't say that. oh <laughs> I came back the next night just to make sure just okay. to be fair. Um, when did you meet my family? A couple months later. I met. Actually, no, you met my dad way before 
we found I met your I dad pregnant. when I was getting, I had my nose pierced, you I had, had my eyebrow pierced, I needed boxes to move, move. And you got them from his warehouse. And then my mom you met when my dad was put in the hospital. Yeah. How did you know I was the one? Okay. I'll I didn't. Out there for you. Well, they're waiting on the forklift. Oh, okay. Okay, well, to be you... fair, knowing she was the one, that came in the form of confirmation uh, because okay. afterward, after the fact. Well, we're going to do a video on the story of us because it was a, kind of a mess, but we were a one slash two to... night stand that turned into yeah, a pregnancy. Yeah, that turned into a big deal. And I found out I was pregnant. But how did I know? This is it's just kind of the, it's something you get well, throughout your whole life, well, I'm sure. Well, when we found out I was pregnant, I told you that you had the chance, you could leave if you wanted and to. And I didn't want to because and I had this, said, I've, I had the strongest attraction for you or for her. And you wanted a family. For the long, like ever since I met her, like I had a really strong, potent attraction towards her. And now we're two and a half, almost three years in. And I'll tell you what. There are times where I receive that confirmation again, like she is the one, because I'm not gonna lie to you, things happen in life, you know? We get stressed out, we start beating each other up. So I had a bloody lip, like, she had a black eye, I'm just playing. So for us, instead but, of like a feeling like they tell you like, oh, you'll just know, or it's, it's not just, feeling it's of throughout love, time, it's you know, every God's day. God's telling yeah, us. Yeah, every day, God will remind you when you really need it the most. We were both a hot mess separately, and he brought us and together. Brought us together, and, and Isaac was conceived. Perform miracles. And, and it was pretty intense. Anyway. Yeah. One other blog. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of information <laughs> in there. When and why did you fall in love with me? Well, when you got pregnant. When you got pregnant, the, uh, things changed on a molecular level within me. All I found sudden, out I was pregnant sudden, December 11th. I moved in with you the 14th. And that's life started. Wow. Yeah, things just they went fast, just, very, very fast. So but when she when I found out she was pregnant, I was excited. You know, I was so excited. She was scared, but I was excited. And I was you know, things change. So I how mean, long have we been together, relationship and marriage? Relationship would we, be let's see, uh, November kind of, of two thousand sixteen. Isaac no, Isaac was conceived November of twenty seventeen. Found out I was, and we had kind of cut things off. Found out I was pregnant in December of 2017. Had moved in together that month. We're together, you know, since then, but what you'll hear in the serious video is I was married prior. And the divorce took a long time. That divorce was finalized in February of 2019 yeah. you proposed in March and we were married in July yeah of last year the divorce so took a year. the most amount of time away from us getting married because my divorce took over a year I wanted to be married uh she was already married my ex-husband I think there's did a lot not want to there's a lot let of go. yeah he, and by let go not, in, not some, in a let go of they loved a, me, a let go of it. There was an ulterior motive, but we can't well, speak on the behalf of other people. No, I'll, All well, we I'll tell my divorce that. story and the she, mess of how that'll we be came another to video be. Where, where, yeah. Okay. But how do we resolve problems? We didn't answer the question. The answer was like two and a half years, wasn't it? Oh. From, well, if you consider when Isaac was a C conceived, November. Of 2017, so November of this year would be three years. Yeah. But almost married for one. I'm waiting for that forklift. Um, That's what I'm looking for. How do you? How do we resolve problems? It's it's. I'm gonna say it's an it's an. Uh, it's, we get mad. We argue very, in a very petty way. Walk away. Realize we were petty. Come back. Say we're sorry. Ask for forgiveness and move on. One thing about it is, or we I don't, cry. We, we <laughs> don't. We I don't cry. like. Uh, we don't like um, dwelling or what is it? Being stagnant. There's another word for it. We don't like sitting still in a moment where we are against each other. Like we just got done fighting. We'd rather just deal the, with it then. And the sooner we can get, get back to with. having fun and laughing and joking. 
the better. You the know? very cliche thing of whoever don't has to go say, to bed angry, yeah. we do. Whoever has to say I'm sorry first, you know, whatever it is, as long as we can get out of that nasty feeling. And of therapy being, helps if yeah. it's too big of a problem. Therapy is where we talk about it. We certainly do a lot of therapy. So therapy is very worth it. I'm nervous about these doors, okay. gosh. Me too, okay. What do we do for a living and are we using our college degrees? Well, I'm a stay-at-home mom. That's what I do for a living. I'm a crane operator. And I dropped out of college, so. I graduated college, <laughs> but I graduated college when I wanted to be a wildlife biologist. At first. Um, I got my hands on some chains. We were putting an excavator out on a on a um, barge out on an internship that I had in Port Arthur. And putting my hands on those chains made me realize how much I love construction. So I was going to graduate my wildlife degree and then dive into a construction engineering degree until we found out our son was pregnant. Our so, son was pregnant? Mm -hmm. She was pregnant. <laughs> oh, we are living in 2020. But he's only one here. Anyway, <laughs> forgive me. Um, so I decided to make use of my crane operator's license and just go back into the field. And I love it. So. And you'll I'll probably never, never finish your college degree unless, unless you I, absolutely needed a job. Well, unless I like struck it rich and became like a if we gazillionaire, did, then I would go back if, and, and ban ducks. And if do, we didn't have the amount know, of bills that we have help to pay the now, earth, you could help the earth. do that. Okay. All right, hold on. We're gonna have to pause. Is the forklift here? No. I think they'll come up to you when they're ready. Okay, next okay. question. What key elements make a successful marriage or relationship? Humility. Not to humiliate, but to have humility is to be humble, is to admit when you're wrong. Not even admit it, but even more, to recognize when you're wrong. You know, to place yourself below your spouse. And have this understanding of... We learned this in therapy. A lot of the fights people have stem back from things that have happened to them. Oh, yeah, As yeah. children or young adults. Yeah. And so learning... Healing. What's behind the behavior someone's showing. Essentially, and taking the time to understand why they feel the way they when, do, acknowledging when two people come the together, they're they're when two broken people come together, they're going to help each other build each other back up. Well, I think a big, a big uh, thing that has helped us because right now, look, we're making a YouTube video, we're doing very great in our marriage, but it wasn't always like we that. There was moments. a lot of choppy ground, and a lot of it stemmed from what happened during my childhood and mine. And I was a, I used to be an addict, so having to cope and deal with all that stuff and being in a relationship, fixing to be a dad, it was very difficult. And so what we did is we we introduced therapy, um, which, is, I, which has been a godsend for us. Therapy's awesome. Helped me reorganize my thoughts and, uh, and, and history. Anyway, definitely healing from the past, uh, allowing yourself to be... No, I was going to say the best person for your spouse. I mean, it's the best thing you can do for them is, being, is to recover and, from anything that you might be doing. Like, you know, a lot of people say honesty and be honest with your spouse and tell your spouse everything. But like legitimately, like we know the ugly, the bad, the stuff that you would never want to repeat to anybody. There's some nasty stuff there. But we tell each other because without it, it's yeah. always going to be in the back of it. Being honest with each other. And if you don't deal with if it. If you sin against each other, you know, don't hide honest. it. Just be honest. We're human. I mean, are you going to hide your sin from God? No. He already sees it. The best thing you can do is is confess it. Well, in a and relationship, don't hide it. Because you you, you, you you begin to believe your own lies. And, and you become someone who, you're, who is not the person they come up with. Forgiveness you. is a big thing. And then there comes forgiveness. But let, don't let that take away from the fact that, hey, we still have our petty arguments. You know? You will always have problems. Okay, so still have our petty Marriages arguments. Marriages are not perfect. I win all of them. I'll tell her all the time. Hold on. But, we'll say bye. All right, you guys. It was it was wonderful meeting you. <laughs> all four of you. Ten. All ten of you. <laughs>
Um, Which one of them is you? <laughs> one of them is your friend. Until we meet again.